just this moment, I can probably name more than a handful of people that I work with on a regular basis that will run circles around me when it comes to programming. In fact, a lot of you guys that regularly watch my videos are probably way better at it than me. I've never really been great at programming and this may surprise a lot of you that I don't even enjoy it that much. But before you accuse me of being a hypocrite that runs a YouTube channel called Engineering with Utsav, but says that he doesn't even care much about programming, hear me out. Give me about 10 minutes of your time to explain why I think being a great programmer is totally overrated and how it has very little to do with having a successful and satisfying career in tech. All right, let's get started. So you might have already seen some similar videos where software engineers admit that they're not the best at programming and why it probably doesn't even matter as much as you think it does. The reason I'm making this video is because I do think it's an important thing to talk about and set straight. There's already so much pressure on young software engineers to become successful. And as influencers, I think we should talk about these things so that there isn't an unrealistic expectation of what it means to be a good software engineer. In this video, I am gonna talk about the high level of why we probably put too much weight on being a great programmer. But if you want the nitty gritty, feel free to watch some of those other videos, namely the one by Naman Kapoor titled similarly. I think he does a great job uh, at uh, explaining the nuances of what being a good software engineer actually is. With that said, let's set some context. So what do we think of when we say that someone is a great programmer? Someone who can write perfect code, use the most optimal algorithms, code fast, someone who has a respectable rank in competitive programming, or maybe all of them. Um, and I think we can all agree that anyone who writes optimal, bug-free code fast and perhaps even under pressure is a great programmer. But in contrast, I am pretty sure I've forgotten how Quicksort works. Uh, just this last week, I checked in buggy code that caused a couple of set threes in production, and my brain literally breaks down and cries every time I have to write even the simplest of regular expressions. Based on these, I should have no business being a software engineer, let alone advising a bunch of other people on how to have a successful career in tech. So what gives? Well, I think one of the problems is that we think of the act of programming itself as the end all be all. But in reality, being great at programming is just like being great at using any tool. It's cool that you can use a paintbrush really well and you have great knowledge of how colors work, but it really won't matter until you uh, make an art that is beautiful. A lot of people message me saying they have this brilliant million dollar idea. Great, but the idea is only worth a million dollars when it's executed well. And 99% of the work goes into the execution, not coming up with the idea itself. Um, Steve Jobs was famous for tweaking things and that reflects on Apple's philosophy even today. It takes years for Apple to implement features that other products like say Android phones, for example, have had for many years. But that's by design. They take time because they invest their resources in understanding why certain features work, what their customers want, how they can improve upon existing ideas so that in, they can implement or create the most polished versions of it. And in many ways, coding is no different. 90% of the time you spend writing code, you aren't actually writing thousands of lines of code from scratch. You spend time improving existing code, you extend existing features, you adapt to existing styles of coding to remain consistent. You're not implementing the most optimal search algorithms all the time. GitHub Copilot can probably do a better job at that than you, and literally in less than a second. You also can't always go and write the most optimal implementation just because you can. When you have existing customers, you have to code around the limitations and restrictions. And navigating all these obstacles require you to use many of your tools effectively, not just be great at using just one tool. Say you want to build a game. The fact that you're phenomenal at C++ is only one aspect of it. On top of having a good narrative, you'd need to understand the pros and cons of the rendering engines, physics, 3D modeling, perhaps a little bit of game theory, human psychology and what makes people attracted to certain kind of games, as well as good art design. 
Only when all of these work together, you can produce a great game. Programming is part of what makes you good at what you do, not the entirety of it. The second reason why people overemphasize being great at programming is that they tend to view things bottom up. But before I talk about that, since we are at the topic of building games, would you be interested in having a career in game development? If so, let me quickly talk about today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started in or advancing in, in your career that you love. In their game development programs, you'll not only learn the programming aspect of game development with the likes of C++, C Sharp, and Java, but also learn to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences with game AI, game physics, 2D and 3D graphics, and interface design, along with 3D modeling and texture. There is this one game I frequently play with my friends with pen and paper called Back in the Bowl, and I've always wanted to make that into a real game. But obviously, I have no experience in game development, but I do think that a course like this would be super useful on learning how to do that. The courses in SNHU are also taught by industry experts who will teach you how to do the research, develop and contribute to advances and trends within the field of game programming. Also, all of SNHU's programs are extremely flexible. There are no set class times, allowing to work when and where you want. And if you already have college credits, you don't have to start over. SNHU will let you transfer up to 90 credits towards your bachelor's degree and up to 12 credits towards your master's. So if you love gaming and want to explore a career in game development, definitely check out Southern New Hampshire University's game development program. Visit the link in the description below to get started. Okay, so the other reason we overfocus on programming alone is that we tend to see things bottom up, especially early in our career. Perhaps coding interviews are also at some fault here with the idea that to be considered a good candidate, you have to write bug-free code fast, optimally, and under pressure. Maybe that's what's brainwashing an entire generation of fresh graduates into thinking that that is what being great at problem solving is. But we focus too much on micro solutions and micro optimizations when we view things bottoms up. Think about how you learn to code in school. You learn basic syntax, then learn conditionals, then loops, and then some simple algorithms. And all that while you're taught to optimize at a very micro level without ever having a clue about the bigger picture. And that's the problem, the clear and apparent lack of the bigger picture. We learn about dynamic programming and how to work with tricky and frankly quite complicated algorithms like Levenstein distance long before talking about how spell checkers even work. We learn about Dijkstra's algorithm long before we start building curiosity about how Google Maps works. See, that's not how things work in the real world. When you start in the real world, you don't get a perfectly defined problem to solve. Things are 99% of the times pretty vague. All you get is probably a high level understanding of what the project is and what the problem is. And you have to go figure out how to solve that. You'll probably be given a bunch of resources that you need to investigate into, try to understand the current architecture, set up the project in your machine. And that's what you have to come up a proposal to solve the problem. Your most difficult task here isn't to find the best algorithm, but to understand the problem itself and the pitfalls it may have and how you can fit your own solution into an existing system. This is a very top-down approach. And for that, you will need to do a lot of reading, especially documentation, understand code that many other people have written, reach out and have meetings with people you've probably never met in your life, read up on various design patterns that you've probably never been exposed to, come up with your initial proposal, set up multiple rounds of design reviews, take feedback and incorporate them into your design. And you also have to learn to distinguish between good feedback and when to push back. And you iterate through this process multiple times until you get the final sign up. This can take weeks and sometimes months, depending on the scope and size of the feature. And all this happens before you even write a single line of code. And when you do write the code, it will most likely have bugs. That's why code reviews exist. That's why multiple layers of tests and DevOps pipelines exist. Your code will go through unit tests, get deployed to maybe dev clusters where more automated tests will run. Then they will make it to pre-production environments where probably more functional and stress tests will run. Maybe real humans will use it. Then it'll make it through various stages of production deployment until it is finally considered deployed. All these will give 
give you valuable metrics, logs, data points, which you can use to already start improving your implementation even before the original version makes it to production. Then you repeat the whole process all over again to solve a different problem. See, being a software engineer and being able to solve real world problems has far more to it than just writing the most optimal code quickly. If you're naturally good at it and can do all of the rest pretty well as well, that's great. But if you're amazing at a lot of these other things, but not the best programmer, that's totally okay. Better programmers are there to help you write better code, but being great at software engineering in general takes a lot more skills and years of experience to get good at. So yes, I do think being a great programmer in itself is quite overrated because to solve real world problems, as I said, you have to be good at many aspects of software engineering, architecture, design, communication, leadership, teamwork, where coding is just a small part of the equation. And you can totally have a very satisfying and successful career if you excel at most of these areas, even if you aren't so good at some of them, say programming. In fact, you need to be good at most of these other areas to be successful in your career. As, and as you climb up the ladder, the actual act of programming becomes even less and less important. So when I said in the beginning of the video that I don't really enjoy programming that much, I meant that I would rather be involved in the high level design, the architecture conversations and exploring various approaches and many other aspects of solving problems than just sit and write code all day. Anyway, I hope this video encourages you to think about the bigger picture and focus on a top down approach uh, when solving problems and not just about writing the best code. Writing great code is a valuable skill, but not the only one. Thanks for stopping by and staying till the end. Let me know in the comments below if you're a top-down or a bottom-up kind of person. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram where I host monthly Q&As. And while you're here, check out some of these other videos that I think you'll enjoy as well. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.